Yo, what's going on everybody? It is 1 p.m. here in Chicago, Illinois. That means it's time for another live stream. And it's a weekend live stream because it's marathon weekend, Chicago Marathon. It's just one day away, less than 24 hours. And uh, we are here with a friend today. We've got an in-person live stream. We've got Emily Heller. What's She's up, here. Everybody? What's up? <laughs> All right, we've got lots of people already in the chat. We've got lots of people listening in on the podcast version. It'll be later on. We'll upload it after this. But cool. welcome here. So glad to have you. Happy to be here, <laughs> finally. How are you? I'm good. You know, I think I'm a little bit, you know, the nerves are kind of kicking in mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yesterday was a stressful travel day for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but I think now that that's out of the way, I'm a little less nervous than I was. And I'm just kind of excited to... To run, what I came here for. <laughs> okay, cool. How are you? How are legs feeling? How's everything feeling with the weird travel day yesterday and all that? Um, yeah, I mean, not to quote Chris Chavez, but legs are feeling good. <laughs> um, they feel good. I mean, yesterday was they were like a little bit tight, obviously, so much sitting, standing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think that getting here was a marathon in itself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now that that's over, I'm like, wow. I survived one of the worst days ever. I can really do this. <laughs> I can get to that finish line. So, I'm awesome. feeling good, yeah. Yeah, that's good. And you went to the expo today? I did, I yeah. you got your wristband. Yeah, I got my wristband. You know, there was like a crazy, I don't know if it was like this when you went yesterday, but there was like a crazy line. It was almost like a maze of people. Yeah. Um, but the, uh, the people who worked there had it moving pretty fast, so I was kind of in and out. Okay, good. Yeah. I mean, I didn't have that. I saw your story today mm -hmm. about it, and I was like, that was not like oh my, my experience Insane. at all. I just kind of, I went out there before it opened, yeah. and so we waited for a couple minutes, and then we all kind of rushed in oh, together. Yeah. So it was like, if I wanted to, I could have been out of there in 10 minutes. And I, I you know, <laughs> I always kind of want to be out of there in 10 minutes, but I'm also like, I want to look at stuff. People brought yeah. shoes, people brought gear. I know. Like, I want to check it out. Yeah, I bought um, a Saucony shirt that says something like, run, crawl hell a cab oh, yeah. yeah and i was like i have to get this yeah. this is great <laughs> so good you know i love the way that all the brands like i know there's title sponsors mm -hmm. but like i love the way that all the brands even if they're not title sponsors are showing up to the marathons and coming out with like custom gear for yeah. the races i thought that was cool I, you know i've done i did philly which didn't really have this and i did new york in 2015 um and i remember that was that was an asic sponsored race at mm -hmm. the time and I don't remember like too many other brands having like New York branded gear. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's like a new thing or, yeah. but I, it was great. Yeah, I definitely appreciate the trend um, because then it is another way of kind of like celebrating the race. Totally. Commemorating it without it having to be like just the race shirt. Mm -hmm. Not that the race shirts are bad. No, it's actually know, great. Like, yeah, I like it this year. Yeah. It's uh, kind of retro, a little bit old yeah. school. So. But it's nice to have that like additional thing, mm -hmm. uh, especially if like, you know, if your brand that you love is not the one that's a title sponsor, because yes. then you can have something that matches. Totally agree. All right, let's get to some chat in here. Yeah. Uh, we've got lots of people that are saying, um, well, Antonio Rodriguez says, LFG, exclamation <laughs> mark. <laughs> yeah, LFG is right. <laughs> Vincent Vineras says, hey, Co and M, my two favorite shoe tubers. Oh. This is epic. Three exclamation points. Thank you. So, that's good. That. Um, Terry says, clear picture and good sound today. So. We're, we're, doing, you, we're, Mike. we're doing. <laughs> we're learning. We're learning. <laughs> um, and Ray Sollers Happy Jogger says, "Hi yo, the dynamic duo are here." Yeah. Cool. All right, we've got a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. Before that, I will say one more. Joshua Lopez says, "I'm a huge fan of you, Emily." Thank so, you. I appreciate that. Very cool. Terrence Huey says, "Emily, can we get an update on Kate and Ariana's training?" We can. Okay. So unfortunately, Kate has. An Achilles issue so mm -hmm. she she was gonna run a uh, Marine Corps marathon which ended up getting canceled yeah um, but she's kind of in a running hiatus right now unfortunately but I think you know she'll get it figured out and it'll be fine Ariana is in her I want to say 15th week of a marathon training okay. but I could be wrong on that um, but she's doing great she's done one 20 mile run already and I okay. think she has another 20 mile run coming up so yeah. She's doing awesome. First marathon, too. Yeah, I mean, I think once you hit the 20-mile marathon, like, the rest is kind of, like, not easy. Right. But, like, that's the biggest hill to climb, I think. For so sure. And then everything else after that, you know, once you do, like, you do, like, a 20-mile run, then you do, like, a, a 12 after that, a 16 mm -hmm. after that, then it feels much, like, less in training. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, awesome. Uh, Merck Flip wants to know, is Emily wearing the hookah tomorrow? 
Yes, I'm wearing the Bondi X. <laughs> yeah. I know everybody was very curious about that, yeah. Um, uh, I saw I saw all the videos leading yeah. up to it, mm -hmm. and I saw the explanation. Yeah. Did you bring the endorphin speed, or do you just were like, no, I only need to bring one pair of shoes? You know what? I'm a person who's like kind of impulsive when it comes to that kind of stuff, so if mm -hmm. I did bring the speed, mm -hmm. um, there's a chance that I would have changed my mind the okay. last minute, and mm -hmm. I just don't think it's right for me. Like, yeah. I tried plenty of super shoes, like, as you know, mm -hmm. if yeah. you've done the same, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know what it is about my feet, but there's not one that I've really found that can quite tolerate, that I can tolerate for a full marathon, I don't mm -hmm. think. So this is kind of the best of both worlds. You get like a, a training kind mm -hmm. of shoe, but with the plate. So I feel like it's good for my feet. Mm -hmm. Did you have a hard time making that decision? Yes. I have shiny ball syndrome too. So I get okay. like a new shoe and I'm like, oh, this is oh, awesome. Okay. And it I was like, what's great. shiny ball syndrome? Yeah, like, is that like more like, aroma? No, no. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> so it's like I have this great shoe. So let's say I have a shoe and I'm like, okay, I'm going to wear this. This is good. But then, mm -hmm. like, I get another shoe. Another mm -hmm. shoe shows up at my door. I'm like, oh, this yeah. is great. I'm going to wear this. And yeah. then it kind of, like, is this crazy thing where I just can't keep my mind on anything yeah. um, in, in particular. So um, it was a little bit of a tough decision. But mm -hmm. I think that in the end, it's the yeah. right decision. Do you think that it would have been an easier decision if your running wasn't so public? Yes. Yeah. I, you know, I think... For me, and I don't know, I don't know if you experienced this, but for me, I feel like a lot of people were like, "Well, you have all these super shoes like mm -hmm. that are supposed to be for marathons. Like, yeah. why don't you wear one of those super shoes? Mm -hmm. Like, how come you're not going to wear the Pro or the Alpha Flyer, right. the next percent, whatever it is?" But at the end of the day, like, I'm just like a normal runner, and if right. it's not going to like work for me, then it's not going to work for me. And I know people are like, "Oh, well, you should have picked this shoe and that shoe," but yeah. You can't let too many of the like the outside voices get into your head too much. Yeah. So that's kind of like where I drew the line. I was like, all right, I got to do what's right for me. <laughs> all right. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's why I, I ask because I'm like, I don't think normal people, like not that you're not normal, no. but like people that are, <laughs> whose running isn't so public. Yeah. I don't think that and people give them like a second thought about, no, like, no I'm going to use this shoe. I'm going to use okay. that shoe. But I think that when you get access to like all these things then people are like well then you must use all the things right yeah and i i will use those in different mm -hmm. capacities mm -hmm. half marathon sure 10k sure 5k yeah. sure but i am not gonna risk my mm -hmm. feet yeah. and my like pf issues that i've been having mm -hmm. for me wearing the next percent or the yeah. speed or whatever it mm -hmm. is so cool very cool um let's get to some more comments here um <laughs> Patrick Vanderwall says, Kofuzi, can you do a good morning YouTube? Uh, <laughs> no, you have to do it. Now. Do you want to do one? Yeah, you should do it. Good morning YouTube. There you go. <laughs> that was awesome. I should have done the yo, what's going on, guys? <laughs> you can hey, continue. what's up? Wait, wait, it's yo, what's going on, right? Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yo, what's going on? But the thing is, I don't always say it. I know, you so, don't. So, like, it's, like, someone else says it yeah. in the song. Right. And people, uh, people ask me, like, if I say that, if that's me saying that mm -hmm. at the end, and it's not. So, it's not me. my question for you is, how did you decide on that song as, like, your main song for your YouTube videos? Um, I just, I like that it had, like, a really quiet part and then a really loud part. Yeah. So, I remember it from, I mean, Casey Neistat was a big influence from when mm -hmm. I started just making videos generally. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I remember he said about, like, he's like, I don't like it when videos have, like, an ending when it comes to, like, YouTube videos mm -hmm. or vlogs. Mm -hmm. He's like, it should just kind of, like, cut. It should just end, you end know? Point, yeah. And he's like, I really like it when that happens when I watch other people's videos because it makes me want to watch another one. Like, it doesn't need to have this, like, wrap-up. That's a good point. You know, conclusion, yeah. like, this big, like, send-off because people are just going to click off anyway because they true. know you're ending the video. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was like, all right, what's abrupt? Like, what's an abrupt way to kind of end it? And so if you, like, kind of cut to black for a second, yeah. where the what's going on comes, and then the music hits, yeah, then, then it's like, like an outro. And you have, like, the cool, sequence. like, running footage or whatever it is that day. Yeah, usually if there's, like, bloopers or something, yeah, I've yeah. seen something weird, uh -huh. that's kind of, like, you know, where, where I, what I'll put mm -hmm. there. Um, or anything else that just could fit in the video. But that's how I ended up with that one. Cool. 
and then I found like later on there's this other like huge YouTuber that uses that same song but You're as kidding. intro music oh. but like that person's audience is not in the US oh. so it's like so I've never seen that person okay. before and they're like you're using so-and-so's music and I'm like ah. I don't know and I look at the <laughs> channel and it's got like a million subs and I'm like oh my oh. god wow I don't know if it's a million but there's a lot yeah, and yeah. someone's like oh oh that's interesting yeah someone else had the same idea as you great minds yeah. think alike I guess, I guess it yeah. works for that person so <laughs> yeah um, alright we're getting some feedback that mm -mm. the sound is clipping a bit so we're going to turn everything down just a little bit See how that does. Sorry about that, guys. All right. Um, all right. Nick Kamatara, Kamarada saying about the shoes, the shoes don't make the runner. So, I agree. Yeah. And uh, Nick also says, but those Bondi X are a perfect choice. Thank you. I'm glad. Uh, you know, I had some mixed reviews about that decision, so mm -hmm. I'm happy that, you know, some people were like, oh, you should wear the speeds anyway. Like, marathon's yeah. not about comfort. It's yeah. about speed. And yeah, it's like, yeah. yeah, well, it's also about, like, not getting injured. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's that. So, yeah. No, I really do like the Bond X. It's oh, a weird shoe. Someone fun. was asking me about it today, and I was like, I think that at marathon pace or slower, it works. Yeah. If you're going harder than that, then I think that, like, some of, like, the bulkiness of it kind of gets in the way. Yeah. But I do think that at that just at that marathon effort, I think it really works well. Yeah, I mean, I think the one drawback for me of that shoe is, mm. well, maybe like two sort of, 1.5. Mm. I wish it was a touch firmer. It's very mm. soft. I feel mm -hmm. like it's almost yeah. softer than the regular Bondi. I agree. Yeah, yeah. and the weight isn't great, mm -hmm. but the carbon plate does help with that. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a trade-off, and yeah. the weight, I'll just kind of ignore it for the run. Yeah, see, I Again. like that it's softer. Yeah, I like it. I like it squishy because it does have the plate in yeah. it, too. Um, I always feel like the Bondi, I love the idea of the Bondi, mm -hmm. but sometimes it doesn't always deliver on the kind of the Bondi hype, Yeah. you know? And so sure. I'm like, this is a co very comfortable shoe, but people talk about it. Like, it is like you're running through, I don't know, like some, <laughs> some sort of, whether it's marshmallowy yeah. soft or running on clouds. I'm like, I don't get any of that, but no. I get that this is a really good max cushion shoe. Yeah. But I think the Bonnet X, I'm like, they need to put this foam in more of their shoes. I agree. I really like it. And I think, you know, that the Bondi is actually firmer than the Clifton. I think the Clifton's softer than the Bondi almost. Mm -hmm. um, which is interesting because they say the Bondi is like their most ma like their right. max cushion shoe. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, you know, I can I can see that. I can it's see a little more too. like dense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's yeah. what it is. Well, I think because like with the with the stack height or like the thickness of it, and yeah. because of the wide platform mm -hmm. that it's on, I feel like it maybe it might be the same foam. I'm yeah. not sure, but yeah. just it's behaves it behaves a little bit differently. Right. Yeah. yeah, and it's a great airport shoe. I will tell you that because <laughs> I wore it all day long yesterday. Yeah. I wore it in Milwaukee. I wore it in New York. I wore yeah. it in Chicago. It's been everywhere. Okay. Highly recommend if you are traveling. <laughs> cool. Cool. We've got a uh, question from Rain Runner that wants to know who's watching Ruby. My mom is watching Ruby. Mm -hmm. My mother is um, very supportive, but mm -hmm. she's not big on the endurance sports. My dad's mm -hmm. been doing this for decades mm -hmm. and I think she's kind of like burnt out on the whole thing yeah. <laughs> so she was like you know like I'll hang back I'll watch mm -hmm. Ruby so my mom has Ruby and my my mom has two other dogs that Ruby is totally in love with mm -hmm. so Ruby's like mom's who she is just yeah. like forget okay. it okay so it's like a big sleepover <laughs> yeah okay. she's having a party over that's there. awesome yeah. that's awesome um let's go back to the race for tomorrow mm -hmm. do you uh have any updated goals given the weather given how you're feeling today yeah. what happened yesterday what's so going on? um for those who don't know my mm -hmm. ultimate goal my a goal i guess mm -hmm. you could say is that i want to um finish under four hours mm -hmm. now my other goal my b goal is um i want to pr for my previous marathon which i think i can definitely do my Last marathon was like 419 something. I really mm. think I can do better than that now mm. with the fitness that I have. Yeah. Um, which, just talking about the weather, might be what ends up happening. Maybe it's a it's mm. sub 419, I don't know. But the one thing I will say about the weather tomorrow is that there are definitely days during this summer that I ran long in total yeah. scorchers mm -hmm. where there's just no shade. Mm -hmm max humidity max sun and it wasn't fun <laughs> but right, right. i you know i managed to survive mm -hmm. so i feel like we'll see i'm not gonna totally throw the main goal out the window mm -hmm. but it's really gonna have to de like depend on how i feel in those like 
you know, we were like the first 10-ish miles, you know. Yeah. What, what group are you going to line up with tomorrow? Um, well, I'm, I'm in the second wave. Mm -hmm. um, you mean like pacing group? Yeah. yeah. So I also don't want to get totally like hung up on like the pacer because mm -hmm. they're human too. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what I'm going to do is hang around the four-hour person okay. pacer and um, kind of like hang tight there. Keep an eye on them mm -hmm. and even maybe even start out slower than them and kind of just see if I can pick it up from there yeah. and eventually hopefully like pass that group. Okay. Yeah. I will say for the bigger paces, mm -hmm. like four hours, three hours, like three and a half, like those, there are multiple pace groups. Mm -hmm. And they may start in different places. Okay. So, like, you might be like, oh, look, that person is in this pace group. Right. And you'd be like, oh, actually, no, that's not their time. Because, like, like so I've had that before where huh. I'm talking to them and he's like, I'm like, how are you guys doing? Are you still on pace for three? And he's like, uh, like, no, I'm like 15 minutes back. And I'd be like, what? Oh, God. <laughs> you know, and so, not the pacer with the flags, but like right, other right. people that, like, that I see like that around, are, like, yeah. in that group or that I thought were in the group. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, so I would, yeah, so there's still something to keep in mind is, yeah. like, figure out who are in the group that you're following. Yeah. Because not everyone that, ha like, is behind that flag can right. be the same. No, definitely, group. yeah. And I heard that the um, the GPS in Chicago can be, like, kind of weird, like, with, yeah. because of the buildings. Yeah. So that's another thing to think about. Uh, definitely, like, I'm going to try to, like, hit, la if I do have a problem, I'm going to try to, like, hit lap on my watch yeah. when we get to the mile mark, so. Yeah, I mean, like, at the beginning, you run under underground. Yeah. For so a little gonna bit. So that's going to be a mess. Yeah, so you're not going to get it there. Right. And then you're running through Streeterville, which is, like, urban canyons mm -hmm. the whole way, so you're not going to, and more underground. Right. So you're not going to get good uh, feeding, uh, uh, readings from that, mm -hmm. for sure. But um, I, that's what I'm going to do is I have the field set up so that it's, like, current lap distance current lap duration yeah, that's and then a good like idea. total duration right. and so that way like i don't know whatever mile i'm in that's the only one i care about right, right, and right. so like that's how i'll do it yeah and then um you won't have any more problems with gps until you get back downtown again yeah then it'll the get a little bit point. wonky yeah. that's what they kind of figured but yeah i'm just trying to get prepared for that and yeah I, i'm not gonna give the pacer group like too much uh, control over my day i guess mm -hmm. you could say but It'll be in, my, in the back of my mind, keeping an eye on them, wherever they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what watch are you going to be running? Um, I have a Garmin 935, okay. I want to say, mm -hmm. from my triathlon days. Mm -hmm. um, we just never got rid of it, so it's a good, great watch. I love it. Okay. Um, and then other race kit for tomorrow? Yeah, so I'm wearing a New Balance tank top. It's like the New Balance Ice line i think mm -hmm. it's called super breathable very bright oh i remember I mean, yeah. you're wearing like nick's colors yeah tomorrow. <laughs> i know people were like florida gators colors yeah yeah <laughs> or nick's colors and i was like well i don't know about florida gators because i'm not from florida but yeah. nick's all right yeah okay yeah so it's very fluorescent very like i don't know is that like an 80s or like a early 90s vibe yeah okay <laughs> yeah so i you, you won't be able to miss me out there that's yeah. for sure so yeah was that something you were going for for visibility or you know, like these are the things that I like and whatever colors they are they yeah are. I like bright colors I don't mind them like not exactly matching I think they complement each other but what, I, what really kind of stinks is I dropped the ball I wanted to get like a run like Heller mm -hmm. tech tank top yeah but I waited to the last minute mm -hmm. in classic Emily yeah. fashion and uh, I didn't get one so I'm just going with the bright colors okay yeah. very cool very cool um, all right, Le Chef wants to know, what is Emily doing for nutrition? Okay, so I have five spring gels that I'm going to take with me. Okay. Spring is like my favorite gel that I've been using throughout my entire training cycle. I was using like the Canterbury flavor for a while, but then mm. I switched over to this like apple cinnamon flavor, really good. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna be using those. And I think what I might do is just give Maybe like my dad and Ariana, a couple of extras just in case if I see them on the course, I'll just mm -hmm. grab one. Honestly, I don't take too many when I'm running. Okay. I think five should be more than enough for me personally, mm -hmm. but we'll see how it is when we get out there. Obviously, the heat might mm -hmm. play a part in that. Um, and then on the course, I'm just gonna be taking water and the. I think they have like lemon lime Gatorade. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think it's Gatorade Endurance. Yeah. That'll be on the so course. So that's fine. Yeah. So I'll just take that. But you know what I want to make sure I do is um, start drinking early because mm -hmm. I don't want to be like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm fine, I'm fine, I don't need anything yeah. now because then yeah. it's going to get to mile 20 and I'm going to be like, oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think that people should hit more aid stations tomorrow than they normally do. If nothing sure. else, just to, like, dump some water on yourself. Yeah, yeah. Or I think there'll be ice on the course. And sponges, and I saw. Sponges. And yeah. um, spray. They're going to, like, spray, have hoses or something. I yeah, saw. yeah. Well, sometimes, I think it's a lot of times it's like, oh, it's my neighbor's. <laughs> <laughs> we can see them walking by. 
um, a lot of times they have like the fire department will sometimes bring out trucks okay. or otherwise like I think they'll set up hoses and there's basically like a hose and a ladder and All a really right. tall ladder they'll set the hose That's up cool. and it'll just yeah. spray I'm, I'm down totally down people. for that so, yeah I've been um, definitely enjoying that kind of stuff like normally I would avoid it because I'm like I don't want to get my camera wet yeah. and I'll have water oh, drops true. Yeah. but then I was like no I'll just I'll be fine with the water drops yeah. it's, it's okay I give you so much credit for running 26.2 <laughs> miles with a yeah. GoPro in your hand. I do not know. That's why, that's why you're the GOAT, because, <laughs> because I can't do that. I'm yeah. like five miles, I'm like, oh my God, forget yeah. it. But so you're not going to bring a camera tomorrow? I'm not bringing a camera. No, I'm not well, bringing a camera. I mean, you were saying that you were going to give Ariana or your dad Yes, or I actually some do have gels, a GoPro. Yes. But like, why not give them, be like, I'll give you the camera at like mile seven. Give it back <laughs> to me at mile 13 or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I definitely could. I actually didn't bring the stick for it. I brought mm -hmm. the camera. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I guess I could throw it in my pocket and yeah. just, like, yeah. you know, do this. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think what I might do is, like, just give them the camera to just mm -hmm. film me when they yeah. see me. Yeah. Um, and then I said to, like, if there's any spectators out there who see me, I gave them, I put my email address in my uh, latest video. Oh, like, okay, yeah. You yeah. just, you know, yeah. do that. I saw Seth uh, Demore did that in one video. Yeah. He got a bunch of... Uh, videos but he has like a lot more subscribers <laughs> than me but yeah yeah we'll see yeah his his followers love um filming him they oh do yeah really they do job, so he gets like, a ton it, of them. yeah, yeah. i don't have quite well as many uh <laughs> subscribers but you know maybe yeah. somebody will see me get did you get there. recognized at the expo so i didn't get recognized but i did have somebody um who follows the channel um reach out to me on instagram saw that i was at the expo mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. said hey can we like meet up yeah. and i was like yeah sure okay. i'm at the Saucony booth come yeah. check you know come yeah. say hi so that was fun yeah okay to meet somebody who like kind of follows the journey a little bit very cool yeah very cool um do you get recognized like at races or anything you know it's tough to say now. because of covid and mm -hmm, i think mm -hmm. my subscriber count like got much bigger during COVID. Mm -hmm. So honestly, this is my first race back mm -hmm. since the pandemic. So I can't really tell you if I get okay. recognized or not. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I think I think that you'll probably be surprised because like you're you've been talking about Chicago Marathon. Yeah. You've been making a lot of content about mm -hmm. it, and I'm sure people that are following you, and new subscribers have found you because of that. Yeah. And so, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. I mean. A lot of people have told me like, oh, I'm in this corral, mm -hmm. or I'm in the mm -hmm. same corral as you, or I'm yeah. in the same wave, and like, I'll come say hi. So mm -hmm. if you see, if you're watching this and you um, <laughs> are out there tomorrow, yeah. say hi, you know, yeah. I don't mind. Welcome the, the company out there. <laughs> very cool, very cool. We got a super chat coming in from Tim Sim. It says, weather could be tough at race day with a high of 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. And wishing all runners good luck, stay safe and hydrated. Thank you, we'll try. Yeah, thanks Won't Tim. Wait. Thanks so much for the super <laughs> chat, yeah. Um, People have been asking me if I'm drinking beer. I'm drinking one of these uh, athletic brewing beers, just so everybody knows, because um, they're they're tasty to have during the day. I, I like it. Um, just to, yeah, just I gotta get my hands side. on those. Yeah, um, Erica wants to know, will you be hanging out after the marathon? Yeah, I mean, if I'm in one piece, I will be. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't plan to just rub finish the race and get the heck out of there. So. Okay. I definitely want to like watch some other people finish, mm -hmm. you know, take in the experience yeah. as long as I'm able to do it. Yeah. I think tomorrow's weather is going to be really great for hanging out afterwards. I agree. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be great. Like I know you were saying one of your videos, great for spectators, mm -hmm. great for like hanging out. Yeah. A little bit iffy for running, yeah. but <laughs> yeah. I think we'll be all right. Yeah. Um, Rainworm wants to know, what's the dinner plan for you tonight? So my dad mm -hmm. um, loves Ma Maggiano's. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he, I don't know why, but he yeah. was like, I want to go there. Like, I don't care where we go. Um, so I got a reservation, but I didn't get it till like 745 tonight, which is okay. a little bit late. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, we have it, but um, definitely want pasta. I'm feeling okay. Italian, whether it's... Fettuccine Alfredo, like yeah. right before the race. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like at 7 a.m., yeah. like eating the leftovers. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just like some pasta, some bread. I just want a carb load, you yeah. know, maybe a beer, but I'm like super paranoid about like becoming dehydrated <laughs> so, yeah, yeah so i'm gonna stick into the water yeah i mean i some people like that's like their superstition they'll do the like the beer the night yeah. before when they're traveling you know because yeah. it helps you like relax or whatever but for sure i just have seen my like sleep metrics like they just are terrible when i have yeah beer at dinner you know, i you noticed know? that too like i don't sleep well when i drink like yeah. before i go to bed yeah so it's just I mean, I enjoy day drinking better anyway, <laughs> so it's more of a, yeah. like, if I put more hours between when I've had the beer yes. and then when I go to bed, For then sure. it won't affect the sleep, so mm -hmm. that's kind of how I put it there. That means we have to drink after the race tomorrow. 
Yeah, oh, yeah. like a day drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, Chicago is, is great for it. Mm-hmm. So, like, I mean, you're on the East Coast. I grew up on the East Coast. And um, I just don't feel like day, day drinking was as big a thing, like, for yeah. me growing up. I don't know. Maybe it was just my parents and, like, who they hung out with. But mm-hmm. here in the Midwest, like, day drinking is a sport. Is it really? It's really, it's, so cool. it's really nice. Yeah, I can say my parents definitely don't day drink. They don't, yeah. don't really drink at all. But, yeah. you know, me and my friends will, like, day drink. But it's not like, let's start at 11 a.m. It's more like... 3 p.m., which yeah, kind of yeah. goes, it's like day drinking for like an early, it's like early evening drinking. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like I gotta, I'm gonna get up and run tomorrow, so like, okay, come on, let's, let's yeah. do, do this <laughs> so I can go to bed. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. Um, Le Chef wants to know, what was your favorite part of the expo today? Oh, my favorite part of the expo, that's a good question. Um, you know, I guess what I would say is I enjoyed... As far as booths go, mm-hmm. uh, the A6 booth was really mm-hmm. nice. I haven't seen that like new Metaspeed Sky um, mm-hmm. colorway in person, that like bright red or pink with yeah. like the highlighter yellow. Mm-hmm. So that was nice to like yeah. get my hands on. I think they're calling that. it like sunrise or Is sunset. It? Yeah, or I can see like that. that. Yeah. Or sunburst. I forget. I could be. I could it's be really completely nice. off. Yeah. But like, I mean, that's I what it reminds the, me of. Well, the, the original color is very nice too, but mm-hmm. I kind of dig this new color. But that was cool to see in person. And then I thought Saucony did a really good job. Mm-hmm. And then I mean, like. This is going to sound cliche and kind of corny, but just, like, seeing everybody, like, excited to run. And this is the first time that, you know, in, like, a year and a half that I'm in an experience, like, in, like, a race experience. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of, like, a nice feeling, like, oh, maybe we are getting back to, like, somewhat Mm -hmm. normalcy, you know, as much as we can. So that was kind of, like, my favorite aspect. Okay. Here's another question. This one's from Mark Flip. Will you guys also check out what shoe everyone else is wearing at the race? Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like as, you know, running shoe tubers, yeah. we're, we're shoe geeks. I mean, yeah. for me, definitely, I'm going to be looking at everybody's feet. I think yeah. it's going to be, I'm going to take a bet and take a guess. And I'm going to say um, it's going to be a lot of alpha flies and next percents out there. Mm-hmm. And I'd say the next runner up will probably be like the pro. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. Maybe yeah. I'll be surprised. Um, let's see. Where's one here? Um, Chris, that running guy says, the night before, do you sleep well or are you like a kid before Christmas? Hmm. Yeah, I'm like a nervous kid before mm-hmm. Christmas. Yeah. I'm like the kid who's like really wants like, um, you know, a bike for Christmas and mm-hmm. is like super nervous that they won't get the bike oh, or okay. Christmas will yeah. be ruined. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like that kind of kid. Um, so I'm definitely excited, mm-hmm. but uh, with a more of like an anxious twist to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I'll get a decent amount of sleep, but I'm not expecting to kind of sleep like a baby. Yeah. Do you sleep well before? Uh, no, yeah. no. I mean, I try to get, like, really good sleep, and yeah. I'm like, I'm going to try to get at least seven hours, which yeah. is an hour more than I normally get. Mm-hmm. But I, I end up not doing it because, I mean, and this year has been hard, harder because I just feel like I've been more overwhelmed with a little yeah. bit of the social media stuff. Oh, totally. And so I'm like, I'm wondering if, like, all right, uh, is this one not performing well? Yeah, Do I need yeah. to interact more on it? Is there something, should I change the thumbnail for these videos mm-hmm. or whatever? And so... I think about it, and then all of a sudden I'm like, I'll like, well, let me look at Instagram and see how it's doing. And mm-hmm. then the next thing I know, it's been 10 minutes later, and yeah. I've lost time. And I'm like, well, I guess I'll get six and a half hours mm-hmm. of sleep today. And that keeps happening. And then, you know, then you worry about it, and then it kind of becomes a spiral. And I'm like, yeah. I don't know. I think after this marathon, I'm going to take a little bit of a detox from yeah. some of the social media because yeah. it's just been, it's been a lot. I feel mm-hmm. like. Yeah, I mean, especially because I feel like. Your channel's like grown so much mm-hmm. and you're super active on instagram like with mm-hmm. the reels and stuff like mm-hmm. i feel like i have not created a single reel mm-hmm. i'm like i really should i really should mm-hmm. but i feel like that's a job in itself it looks yeah. like a very involved kind of thing to do <laughs> yeah i mean it takes me like about half an hour oh okay to do a reel because mm-hmm. i just use my running footage right so it's like right you know i already have running footage every day mm-hmm. so it's just pick something and, and set it to music yeah um so that's i try to keep that relatively simple right for but, sure um you know, it gets sucked into it. Yeah, I sure. mean, I have a lot less subscribers than you do, and I know that mm-hmm. it gets overwhelming for me, even like mm-hmm. with all the, with having two videos a week. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I just can't imagine it's probably like a lot of <laughs> a lot of work for you too. Yeah. Between, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I think I need, I don't need to like take a step back. I just yeah. think I need to stop feeling like I constantly need to check on it. Yes. You know, yeah. that's, that's, that gets to be a little bit of a weight. Like an, you can do like an early New Year's resolution to stop That's checking it so much. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Um, Donald Beck wants to know, did you guys get to see any elites out and about? I did not. I have mm-hmm. not seen any. Have you? Um, no. 
No, I have not. Um, well, I mean, I met Nick Willis yesterday oh, cool. at the Tracksmith House. Yeah. Because, you know, he works for Tracksmith, yeah. too. Like, he's not just a sponsored mm -hmm. athlete. And so, like, he was, like, working a table. Nice. Um, and so he's, like, work. I, I don't know. So I went, you go there, and mm -hmm. they're, like, what's your bib number? Oh. And then I was, like, oh, I gave him my bib number. And then he gave me, like, the, the tote bag yeah. thing. And so I'm, like, what are they doing with all the, why did they want to know my bib number yeah. for that? I didn't understand maybe that. Maybe to so, see if you were actually running a race. Or maybe or? there's some sort of surprise late. I don't oh, know if they're going to, like. true. Yeah, I don't know if they're planning something, but yeah. it was like he had a computer. He's like typing in everyone's like bib number as they went through, and I was like, "Can I get like a selfie since you're like one of the best <laughs> really milers ever?" Okay. You know. Um, and then it was really embarrassing because like I was a little bit starstruck, and I was just like, um, "I met Mason Furlick earlier this summer. I know you guys are friends." And he's like, "Oh yeah." He's like, "Cool." Yeah, yeah. So I was like super awkward. You're like, about okay, it. gotta go. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. I wanted to go there, but I actually. Was it? Is it today too? The pop, the pop. Yeah, thing? yeah, and they'll be they'll be doing stuff all weekend oh, as well. So where I'm, is it? It's a like it's at the Chicago Athletic Association. It's across the street from the race. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna go, basically, depending on how disgusting I am after yeah, the race, yeah. I'm probably just idea. gonna go right after, go like walk from the race mm -hmm. across the street. They'll have some. I think they're doing a happy hour. Oh, nice. There too. Oh, cool. I don't. I don't know how like busy it's gonna be yeah. either. So that could also like. I right. might not stay too long if it's like super packed. Yeah, if it's like a line out the door. Yeah, because it was a line out the door when I got there yesterday. Yeah, I saw that on yeah, your. So. Uh, your oh, yeah. A lot of people. Yeah. But I saw him. I met him, and then um, you know I've been seeing everyone's Instagram story. So yeah. like everyone's here. Yeah, but you just like don't yeah. see anybody. <laughs> but the city's big, you know, yeah. and spread out a little bit, so mm -hmm. like people can. And there's different times that people are doing stuff. That's so true. You don't necessarily like run into everyone. Yeah. I'm also not, you know, staying at like the race hotel yeah what is the, the race well hotel? i think most people stay like most of the elite i think they stay at the, the there's a hilton like okay. right on michigan avenue okay yeah that uh is across the street it's not the, i don't think it's the palmer house i think it's a different one mm -hmm. i'm not sure but it's one of the the ones that has like a lot of expos and stuff in it but okay there's a big one out there that's what, that's where i think a lot of people are oh that's interesting it's a giant hotel it's got like a thousand rooms or something yeah it's like probably that. like where everybody is yeah, they're all holed up. Yeah, Sarah yeah. Hall's just like chilling on the couch. Maybe yeah, the race start. <laughs> I, I, I know. I don't. It's like I want to know, like, what are they doing? Yeah, where are they going to eat? Because I remember, for in Atlanta, mm -hmm. when I went for the track trials, like yeah. there was, I think everyone stayed at the Omni because it was like right across the street from the finish uh -huh. line. Um, and like if you just like like milled around the lobby, you would end up seeing like all sorts of right, like, pros because well, yeah. like they're like I that's just so want, cool. they're just like oh, I'm gonna go get a cup of coffee yeah. and they would just walk and go get a cup of coffee. Oh, that's awesome. And so like I don't know if like they just don't do that here or they're just using more room service here or what. But like right. I've never really seen they're like celebrities in the hotel room. Like they, they, they get room service only. Like <laughs> I, don't know, I guess so. Maybe they have. To, I mean, like I wonder if I mean, do, do you do the fake name? Like, yeah, yeah, right. You know, like, <laughs> that's a really good point. I, uh, probably I, not. Maybe like. Like maybe like Galen Rupp does like the fake name. Yeah, yeah. I could I could see Galen Rupp yeah. doing it, but I don't think anyone else really no <laughs> would would do that. Um, oh, Aaron <laughs> Bendek says I saw Kira D'Amato near my hotel. Oh well, that's Very cool. cool. Very cool. And Stephen Lung says I don't know any uh, pros. I only know non-elites. So. There you go. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, Joshua Lopez wants to know what's the warm-up routine like for like pre-race. <laughs> I don't know if I have a really like a set routine. Uh, definitely a lot of stretching will mm -hmm. be involved. Um, you know, I don't usually like run too much like before mm -hmm. the race just mm -hmm. because I'm going to be running like for a long yeah. time out mm -hmm. there. So I think it's just going to be kind of like, you know, probably, I mean, I don't think it's going to be cold in the morning just because it's going to be a hotter day. Right. Just keeping the body like warm, mm -hmm. awake, kind of right. like loosen up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, maybe some jumping jacks, <laughs> I yeah. don't know. But definitely some stretching, for sure. And yeah. some coffee in the morning, obviously. Mm -hmm. I have to figure out some kind of breakfast plan, too. That's okay. kind of up in the air. Mm -hmm. Because obviously, like, usually before I run, like, at home, I'll have, like, you know, two hard-boiled eggs, like yeah. an English muffin. So I don't really have that whole setup here, yeah. so I have to kind of figure out what I'm going to do. I think there's, like, a Starbucks behind my um, hotel, though, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there is. There. Yeah. Okay. Um... Chocolate Child wants to know, is this the first time you guys met in person? I recall yes. Emily meeting Seth at New York and Mike K meeting Mike J. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, is, this the first is our time. first time. I think it's long overdue, though. I think yeah. if the pandemic had not happened, yeah. we probably would have met sooner. I think so. I think so. Um, do you have any plans for New York? Um, well, it's kind of up to my fiance and what she wants to do because okay. okay. <laughs> it's her race. Oh, okay. um, but 
you know, I don't know. Um, I thought about like doing a little something, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I really don't want to like take away from like her plan and like mm -hmm. what she wants to do. Yeah. But I definitely will be out on the okay. course yeah. supporting, and I'll be at the expo with her. So okay. I'll be around. Cool. Yeah, I'm yeah. planning to head out too. Oh, you are. Just to go and watch and take it all oh, in. I don't nice. have a bib, but I'm like, you know what? I think I should just go out there. Yeah, and you know, I think Seth is actually doing it again. I think so. Yeah, so he that's likes cool. it because he's from. The from New York. Yes. Well, not city, yeah. but. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but close, yeah. Yeah. Upstate New York. Yes. <laughs> actually, upstate New York. Upstate, upstate New York. Yeah, like, actually. Do you guys, I mean, you're, you're, you're from Long Island, right? I am, yeah. In, from New Jersey, from my perspective, mm -hmm. everything that's not New York City is upstate New York. Is that how you guys look at it from, um, from Long Island or what? You know, kind of. Yeah. If it's like Westchester. Mm -hmm. Then I wouldn't say it's like upstate New York. Okay. To me, upstate New York feels like Albany. Yeah. Feels like Oneonta. Okay. Yeah, I would. It's hard to say. I wouldn't characterize everything as that. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> kind of like uh, a little bit. All right. Um, Ray Soller is a happy jogger coming in with the super chat. Says all the best to you guys tomorrow. Any last minute advice for him on his Long Beach half marathon tomorrow? This is going to sound so lame, but just have fun. Don't mm -hmm. take it too seriously, because yeah. I think that's when you get in your head, Yeah. and that's when it becomes a problem. Okay. <laughs> so have fun. Um, that's great advice. Any mantras and stuff that you're going to be using tomorrow? Um, just run like Heller, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> no, a I great know. one. That's a great that's one. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Uh, Ale Ale oh, this is a hard one. Aleas Tsima says, good luck to the both of you. Thank you. And um, someone else mentioned, where was it? That um, that we are at 304 viewers right now. Wow! That's, I think that's the most we've ever had. You're breaking records wow. on the live breaking stream. Wow! Breaking the internet like Kim Kardashian. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and um, Simon Evans says, "OMG, there has to be a Kofuzi, Emily, and Seth live stream. That would be amazing. That would be really cool if we yeah. could set that up. I think that would that would break the running internet though. <laughs> it that, would. But that would definitely be fun. And Scott says, "Long Island is definitely not upstate." Oh no, Long Island's not upstate. I mean, I feel like Long Island's Long Island. It's like Long Island, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so my question to you is: yeah. Do you hear a Long Island accent, or do you not really? Because you're not really around Long Island enough to know. No, I mean, I don't really hear it. Yeah. But like, I have also lost my New Jersey accent. Right. So well, that's like, true. Because yeah. I've picked up so much Midwest, but like from being in the Midwest yeah. since like '98, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. like. Yeah. I, yeah. So I'm I lost and I don't hear it. I mean, I hear. You know, I don't hear a Long Island accent on you. I, I can hear the Long Island accent on yeah. people, but I don't hear it on you. No, I'm just wondering, because sometimes yeah. I get that, like, in my comments a little bit. Like, Is it from all other Long Islanders that are saying or that? Or people or? who have just been, or, yeah, I guess, or, like, New Yorkers, okay. or, like, kind of in the East Coast. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Surrounding area. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, Daniel M. says, no accent detected. <laughs> <laughs> Great. That's good to know. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, Oliver Shields says... What are you shoe? What shoes are you guys running in other than a six and meta speed? Are you running in the meta? Have you run in the meta speed sky? I have. Yeah. yeah. You know, I really liked it. It's so funny. I was just telling my fiance yesterday that um, mm. I had the meta speed sky and I ran in it and I really really liked it. I did mm. like a jean, a blue jeans mile oh, yeah, in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And I'm a person who will like put something somewhere and like leave it there and like forget about it for months. Mm -hmm. So I had them in a backpack next to the door in our house, and mm -hmm. I left that backpack there since I literally did this blue jean mile in okay. like June. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I forgot I had them, and I was like saying to her like, "Darn! Like I wish I had remembered I had them so yeah. I could have like tried yeah. to run like longer in them." Mm -hmm. So. Oh well. Well, <laughs> well you maybe mentioned, next time. You mentioned earlier that you have the well, shiny ball sy syndrome. Yes, I so, do. like, it wasn't, it wasn't new. I have that as well, where yeah. people are like, oh, you've been running in a lot of hokas lately. You must be, like, full on hoka fanboy now. And huh? I'm like, well, I just got these shoes sent to me. They yeah. sent me, like, three at the same time yeah, or so two at the same time. And so it's like, these are the new ones. Yeah. And so this is what exactly. I'm running in. Whatever I get that's new, I'm like, I got to try this immediately. Although yeah. Some yeah. do, I like, I don't know if you have the same issue, but you run a lot more miles a, me mm -hmm. a week. Um, some I get, and then I like don't have the time to like run them right away, and mm -hmm. they kind of like fall to the wayside. Yeah. And like I, I'm like clawing back at them yeah. to like you know get them in the rotation. It's it's tough, you know. What shoe is not getting enough attention in your rotation right now? Yeah, um, one shoe that I wish I had tried that I got a while ago, mm -hmm. and that I do hope to try after this marathon is just like the Max Road. Oh yeah, five yeah, yeah. From Skechers. Yeah. 
That, and I also got the Speed Freak from Skechers, mm -hmm. and I didn't get to try that yet. I wish I had. Okay. And just, um, there was another one, too. A shoe that I really wish worked for me that worked up until 18 miles was the mm -hmm. Adi Zero Pro. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love that shoe. I know. I really wanted to, I, I really yeah. wanted it to work so bad, and it worked like a charm up until 18 miles. I don't know, Mike, like my legs were screaming. Mm -hmm. So just another carbon plated shoe that didn't yeah. really end up working out for me, but. Yeah, I mean, I have a, a, a lot that like are in the closet yeah. and every time I'm reaching for something else, you're like reach in you're and like, then you're oh. like, oh, but I forgot. Yeah, I yeah. still have those SL20s. Yeah. I still have like the Under Armour shoe, oh, the yeah. Flow Velocity, which I'm like, that's a good shoe. I just keep. I know. I'm like, but this is newer. I know. <laughs> and I so you keep too. like, it's like timing is everything for the shoe release, yeah. I think. Oh, and the Mach 4 is another one. I loved <laughs> that shoe when it came <laughs> out. And I still really do like it. <laughs> but I just got so many other shoes that yeah. are all just yeah. like piled up and those kind of like faded to the background a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's another shoe I wish that I had put more time into a little bit. Yeah. Um, I, I know we're like all focused on tomorrow, but mm -hmm. like what's what's on in store for you for the rest of the year for your running? Yeah, I think um, once I'm done with mm -hmm. this race, I kind of want to focus a little bit more on shorter mm -hmm. like speed stuff. Mm -hmm. And by shorter, I mean like half lower. Mm -hmm. um, maybe like a 5k during the pandemic i did do a 5k like pr i honestly can't okay. even tell you what it was but i know that my pace was like 655 to 59 i can't remember okay. Okay. <laughs> i'm terrible at remembering my yeah. prs mm -hmm. but i think it was around there and that was like good for me but i'd love to see if i could like build on that mm -hmm. 5k is definitely not my strong suit um and maybe pr half again okay. i mean i i did that um before the pandemic I don't know, I'd like to see like kind of like what I can do with these different dis distances, like 10K as well, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, now that I have like a little bit more fitness. Yeah. So, we'll see, yeah. Very cool. Here's a very important question. It's a mm -hmm. pizza question. A with pizza. a super chat from Daniel M. He oh, says, <laughs> is deep dish technically pizza? Have you tried the deep dish? I have tried it okay. years and years ago. Yeah, because yeah. this um, is not your first time coming to Chicago. It's not, but I was yeah. like 10 when I came here yeah. last. Um, I would say that it is pizza, Okay. but I think, <laughs> and I don't mean to be like an yeah. East Coast snob, yeah. but I think that New York, New Jersey kind of have a one-up yeah. on the pizza. Yeah, well, I, I will agree with you on that. Yeah. I will go further, though, and say I don't really think that deep dish is pizza. Whoa. It's more of a like a casserole or a pie, casserole. I think, Yeah. like a savory pie. I feel that, yeah. Um, that's kind of where true. I feel like it is, um, but... You know, I think I have a preference for like that New York style yeah, slice. Yeah, like a little I, bit thinner. You know, but thin, I, yeah. I think like, well, for me, like it's pizza if you fold it. Yes. If you're not folding it, then it's then a flatbread. You can't, yeah. <laughs> or, or a casserole, one yeah. of those, those other words. You can't really you know? fold deep dish. It's no, too thick. No, I mean, sometimes you don't even need it with your hands, you know. Right, it, with a fork and knife. Well, I know, yeah, which it makes it very much not which like pizza. Which is like a big no-no. I mean, I, sometimes I do do that, to be honest, if it's yeah. like, if it's not like a plain piece of pizza, if it's like mm -hmm. some fancy thing, like a ziti yeah. or like, then yeah. I might whip out the fork and the knife, but <laughs> otherwise I try really yeah. to stay away from that. I'm yeah. not a big thin crust pizza person, mm -hmm. yeah, or like brick all. oven or whatever they call that, but yeah. regular pizzeria, East Coast style, yeah. that's, that's where it is. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, my way of reconciling, kind of like trying to ma not make anyone mad about it, yeah. is like, whatever you grow up eating, that's the best for you. You I know, love that's it. what you like to that. eat. And so I don't like nothing. I don't think anything's better. I tell people what I grew up eating. Yeah. And it's kind of. And I'll, how it goes. I'll like have Domino's once in a while. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Like yeah. it just hits different sometimes. It does. Yeah. It does. All right. Um, how about this question from B. B. Cockton says, are there any international marathons that you want to run? Um, hmm, that's a good question. Yeah. I mean, I would maybe do like the London Marathon. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a fun one. Mm -hmm. Um, Berlin is also a cool idea. I am not gonna lie though, I hate airplanes. Okay. <laughs> which makes me sound kind of yeah. like a, like, a, like I'm in a bubble. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I do fly obviously, cause mm -hmm. I'm here. Yeah. But the idea of going to London is a little daunting as far as like travel goes. Okay. But I would do it. Okay. That's an idea. But not further than London. I mean, I don't see myself ever going to like Australia. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah. um, yeah, I could do London. I, I could do like Berlin, Germany. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if I was still doing triathlon and I yeah. somehow qualified for Kona, yeah. then I'd obviously go. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But yeah, 
if I can get something that's a little more local, then I'm okay. probably going to stick with it. All right. Very cool. Um, Chris Lucero says, Emily, will you go for Boston one day? <laughs> yes. I would love to go for Boston one, yeah. one day. I don't think I'm quite there, but I would love to do that. What's the, what's the BQ time for your age group? Hmm, I think it's like three... I could be wrong about this, so correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I think it's anywhere from like 3.40 to 3.30. Okay. And I just don't think I'm quite there. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's impossible, though. Yeah. So I think if I yeah. keep working at it, you could get there. I think, though, as a person gets old, I'm speaking from personal experience, mm -hmm. as you get older, I feel like the BQ level is like relatively easier to yes, get. Yes, it is, because it gets like a little bit slower, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, because I, I mean, and who knows, that may change, mm -hmm. like, as, I feel like as like a like a generation of runners continue running through older age. Yeah. I think that the like relative difficulties will kind of even out. Mm -hmm. But like when I, when I look at people that are like men that are like under 30, it yeah. has to be a sub three. Oh I'm like, that's not easy. Even if, I mean, even if you're under 30, I don't think it's easy. Um, but I think like a 310 for someone that's in my age group is not, again, not easy, but it's, I don't think it's as hard as running sub three. No, so. I mean, it's, but it's still very hard. Yeah. I don't think I'll ever see a 310. <laughs> but yeah. I'll be happy to, you know, even if I don't get a bid for Boston one day, it would just be mm -hmm. cool to, like, qualify. Yeah, yeah. Um, would you run if, like, a, like if, let's say Adidas called you up and, like, we want you to run. We know you don't have the time, but we want to get you a bid. You want you to run. Would you do it? Because I've seen other people that are that run, like, publicly, like you and I do, yeah. like, have, have done it before. Mm-hmm. I think it's a difficult question to answer. You know, that is difficult. Mm -hmm. I I don't, at this moment, I don't mm -hmm. know if I will feel differently about this in a year from now mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. At this moment, I don't think I would. Yeah. Um, and I think that's just because I want to, like, qualify for it. I right. want to, like, yeah. earn it. However... Um, that's not to knock people who raise money, obviously, right, right, because that's right. very cool and respectable. And I would also do that. Mm -hmm. um, and I did that for New York, although it's a little different circumstances, mm -hmm. obviously. But, um, yeah, I'm going to say not right now. I wouldn't do it. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a hard one because it's yeah. like you, you want to feel like you earned your, your spot right. there. Um, so, yeah, that's something that I like. I thought it, it, Adidas doesn't call me really. Right, but it's so totally different it's not, for you it's not because an issue, you but. could, you have qualified, right? Yeah. Just not, not, not gotten the bid, right? Yeah. So yeah. technically, like, yeah, you, you did qualify. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? no, yeah. So I feel like it would, it'd be less hard for me to make that yeah. choice if they were like, we want you to like, you know, document your experience. Here's sure. the paper. Sure. Of course. But I, I still would feel like. You know, but like everyone else had to run seven minutes faster than their time yeah. to get in this year, right. and I didn't run seven minutes faster. Yeah. So I feel like there's like a, it's you know, like a, I don't think I should be here. Yeah, kind of right. I mean, the other side of that is like mm -hmm. if someone called me up and was like, oh, like we're going to get you a bid for New York. I mean, not mm -hmm. this year, but, yeah. Yeah. and they were like, oh, you don't have to like, you know, we'll, we'll take care of whatever mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. Then maybe I would do it because it's yeah. a little bit different circumstance. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Any, any other race? Yeah, I would do it, but yeah. like because B Boston has yeah. that kind of different qualifying yeah. aspect to it's a it. Different, different vibe. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sam Gazinski says, Emily, have you ever done a New York Roadrunners race other than the marathon? I have not. Okay. I'm not. And Carm twelve hundred wants to know, do you have any other races planned for this year? I do not, <laughs> but I will. I just haven't really looked at it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you're to get those half marathon, that half marathon work. You're gonna, you're gonna be looking on the calendar. Yeah, you know, yeah. actually, I saw that they're at the expo. They were even there, like Brooklyn Half, Brooklyn mm -hmm. Marathon. That's when is that? I, I think it's in May or April. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that might be an option. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Okay. Cool. Um, Linton Wong says two of my favorite YouTuber YouTube runners and reviewers with a heart. Nice. <laughs> and Francisco Moreno says greetings from Peru and South America. I wow. wish you both good luck tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Um, any other parting thoughts before? I don't want to keep you here too long. Oh, I know it's the okay. day before the race. <laughs> Any right. other parting thoughts for today? You know, I just, um, I think, like, I kind of, I don't know if I said this to you off camera or if we were on camera, but um, getting here was a marathon in itself. <laughs> yeah. So I think whatever happens tomorrow, okay. I feel privileged to be here. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who, like, wish they could do a marathon mm -hmm. and are unable to because of pandemic injuries, whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. So I just feel really lucky to be able to, to the start line and 
cross the finish line. So whatever happens in yeah. between there yeah. happens. So. Yeah, I think I think that's great because I think that there are going to be a lot of people watching, wishing they could be here. Mm -hmm. We wish you guys were all here too. Yes, definitely. Um, and I also think there's a lot of people probably watching this like in their hotel room, trying to keep their feet up, yeah. legs elevated, yes. stay hydrated. And I think that thinking about that, having that kind of gratitude mm -hmm. um, going into the race is going to be yeah. a great strategy for all of us. Yeah, I mean, the one th one thing I will say also, not to keep rambling, but like think about where we were this time last year and how this yeah. felt like it would be impossible. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. I mean, to some it might matter like what your time is and stuff and you know, you want a PR and all that and I totally respect that. I do too. But I think the most important thing is like how far we've come and how we get to do this. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for spending time Thanks with for me today. Me. Yeah. It was great to this finally meet in person and get a chance to chat. Yeah, awesome. All right, everybody, make sure you subscribe to Emily's channel yes, and tomorrow go and run like Heller. That's right. Thanks. <laughs>